huge official news breaking on the Cyhawk game eve. Four-star offensive tackle Nick Brooks has officially committed to be a Hawkeye. How about that for uh, the day before Iowa versus Iowa State? And, of course, Iowa, no stranger to getting big-time commitments from big, physical, athletic tackles. Most recent commit, of course, was Caden Proctor, who ended up flipping to Alabama. But this one is absolutely massive. Nick Brooks recently moving back after moving to Georgia. He's an Iowa kid, moved to Georgia, recently moved back to play at Iowa. And it sounds like he's been on board for a while, made it official today. And just absolutely huge. He's listed at six foot eight, 345 pounds. Just to put that in perspective, that's basically the same size as Caden Proctor at that age, maybe even a little bit bigger. Do I dare say that? <laughs> a little bit bigger than Caden Proctor? Now, not a five star like Caden was, but he is considered a consensus top 15 offensive tackle in that 2025 class. In fact, if you look at that class, uh, on three's got him as the 15th rated offensive tackle. ESPN's got him as the number 12 rated offensive tackle. Rivals has got him as the 12th rated offensive tackle. And uh, boy, he had a number of offers. He had offers from just about anybody and everybody on the table. A bunch of blue bloods tried to make a push for Nick Brooks, including Georgia, including Alabama. North Carolina State offered, South Carolina offered, LSU, Penn State, Central Florida, Auburn, Nebraska, Florida State, Michigan, Iowa State, Ole Miss, Louisville, Georgia Tech, Michigan State, Texas, Miami, the U, Miami, Mississippi State, Florida, Tennessee, Wisconsin. I mean, the list goes on and on. Kansas, North Carolina, Pitt also had some interest from Clemson. Don't know if they ever pulled the offer, but unbelievable offer list. For a guy who's playing at JFK in Cedar Rapids this year, he's been given a 91.54 industry ranking according to On3. How does this change things for Iowa's 2025 class? Well, first of all, the future along that offensive line. We'll see what that line looks like tomorrow against Iowa State and moving forward throughout the rest of the season. Certainly will have an impact on the future. Brian Ferentz, George Barnett, etc. But they've got some pieces now. Uh, despite losing Caden Proctor last year, and I agree, if, if he, Caden was on this roster, he'd probably be your starter at right tackle. But you look at who they've got committed in the 24 and 25 classes now. Nick Brooks is coming part of that 2025 class. Joey Van Wetzing is probably going to be a defensive lineman at Iowa, could potentially end up playing on the offensive line. But let's not forget in 2024, those are the only two guys committed in 2025. But in 2024, don't forget Iowa's got a commitment out of Will Nolan, really talented offensive tackle from the Chicago area, Cody Fox, is a four-star kid right from the state of Iowa. He's projected to be an interior guy. They've also got a commitment from Bodie McCaslin, who's listed at 6'5", 270, projected as a tackle. And they've also got Josh Janowski, who's projected as an interior guy. But you pair those guys with some of the young talent they have brought in, including Jack Dotzler, who's uh, been listed as the backup left tackle behind Mason Richmond. And now you add a couple more young guys, including Nick Brooks, who will be the foundation of that 2025 class, very similar to how Caden Proctor was the foundation of the 2023 class. And of course, that went all for naught in the final days prior to the early signing period beginning. I watched a little bit of his tape. Obviously, his strength at six foot eight, 345 is impressive. He's dominating uh, his level of football. That's no surprise for a guy who's a high four star and is projected to be uh, as good as Nick Brooks is. But for more perspective on Nick, I want to bring in a good friend of mine, Tom Cakert from On3.com, who's been following the recruitment of Nick Brooks for a long, long time. But before we get to that, I want to talk a little bit about my sponsors for the show today, Ascent Nutrition being one. Check out their great products, including their new Agaricon and Lion's Mane Mushroom Powders. Great for your gut health and your overall immune system health. Read all about these awesome products at GoAscentNutrition.com. You can use the code HAWKEYES. For 15% off, yes, the discount is now 15% off your total order at GoAscentNutrition.com. Also, Iowa floor covering and their Tough Core Click Together 4.5 millimeter waterproof vinyl flooring. It's available at 269 per foot. I know Tyler is excited about the addition of Nick Brooks. Tyler, Ryan, and the guys down at IFC will help you out with whatever your flooring needs are. Visit them online, iowafloorcovering.com slash DIY. Pleased to be joined now by HawkeyeReport.com's own Tom Kakert. And Tom, thank you for hopping on. Uh, kind of an emergency uh, little uh, yeah. segment here because great news for Hawkeye Nation. One day prior to Iowa, Iowa State with uh, 
four-star offensive tackle Nick Brooks committing to Iowa football. And I think some people who have been on the beat like yourself have had a feeling this was coming for a while. Can you talk about what led to this decision? And of course he was originally, it sounded like he was going to commit last spring. Yeah, he just, uh, today's his birthday, but you know, really he's kind of been committed for several months. Um, at least, you know, verbally kids can change their mind. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's been kind of, um, a done deal kind of thing that he was going to be a Hawkeye. So, um, yeah, Nick's an interesting story because he grew up in Cedar Rapids area and then he moved to Georgia and played last year down there. And obviously folks in the Southeast, uh, got a look at him and, um, you know, a lot of them like Alabama, LSU schools like that all offered him scholarships. So, um, you know, he's got like 35 offers and they're all like, it's big time schools. I mean, I get one look at six, six, eight, three forty-five, and the kid's pretty nimble. I happened to, um, it's uh, ironically, I got to see him play against, um, in the same game with, uh, Joey Van Wetzega, who's the other commitment in the 25 yeah. class last weekend at Pleasant Valley, uh, high school. Uh, Joey did not play in the game. Uh, he was out, but, um, you know, they were still around each other. So I thought that was interesting that they were around each other, at least in that, in that game. Uh, I don't know if they know each other or not, but, um, both are going to be offensive linemen. So, uh, Iowa doing what Iowa does, which is recruit the in-state linemen and get them on board uh, early. And they're both, you know, Brooks is, he's nimble for his size, moves pretty well, uh, finishes plays. Uh, I would, the the one criticism I would like, to, I would like to see him be maybe more aggressive at the point of attack, um, just, you know, to begin the play. But he finishes plays really strong. So um, I, I think maybe that's just one thing uh, that I would kind of nitpick about him. But great kid. Um, Happen to know one of the officials that worked the game on Friday. And he told me before the game, uh, he came over and he said the kid came over to him, introduced himself uh, just to say hello and was extremely respectful in his conversation. So that's before the game even starts. And of course they flagged him like on the second play of the game. Uh, so, which I thought was funny, uh, but uh, um, he earned it. He was, he, he, he committed the infraction. Uh, so it was anyway, he's, he's a talent. He's a top hundred, top 150, four star kid uh, in the country. You just can't, you can't um, can't make up six eight through forty five and carry it. I mean, he's literally. It's like the blind side. And it's probably not the greatest example to use, but with, with the rest of the Cedar Rapids Kennedy kids, there's nobody that's even close. Yeah, and, and that's one thing no, that stood out to me, Tom. Is I what you said is I'm a line guru, but uh, he does finish plays. And I would think at 6'8", 345, most of these schools are looking at him saying, man, we can't pass up on on size. We can we can work on these things. Yeah. Um, you know, your, your platform on three has got him as a uh, the 12th rated offensive tackle nationally. And obviously with that type of size, Tom, the first person that comes to people's minds is Caden Proctor, who yeah. was also listed around 6'8", 330, 335. So Nick Brooks may actually have a few pounds on Caden, at least at that age. Obviously, it Caden. It does. I saw them both at about, kind of about the same same time, and yeah, he's bigger than Caden. Caden was big, but this dude's just—he's like a human silo. I mean, he's just big. So what? What? Uh, I mean, the fear that's going to come over Iowa fans, I know, oh, yeah. is hey, know you is. got this kid. He's the second piece of that twenty-five class. He's a foundational piece. You can build that class around him. But the reality is, with someone like this, he's going to get more offers, Tom. And you know, you're looking through the the offers he's already got Alabama, Georgia, Penn State, Michigan State, Michigan. He he hasn't gotten an offer from USC yet. He'll probably get one there. He's probably going to get offers from, you know, Texas, etc. And these other schools are going to keep pushing for him. If we didn't, haven't learned anything from the Caden Proctor saga. So, what reassurance can you give to Iowa fans? Obviously, the future is unpredictable, but uh, 
Yeah. What reassurance can you give to Iowa fans? Uh, in today's day and age, it's hard to give a lot of reassurance because you never <laughs> know what. Um, but it, I, I think there were always, let's just say, forces in the Cape and Proctor thing that were kind of looking for something. Um, I don't get the sense with this kid that there's the hands out, if you so to speak. Um, I, I think he just he wants to be close to home. Uh, he wants to uh, be around his family. He's got a, a pretty large family, from what I understand, and he wants to be around people. So uh, those are his people, and that's why he came back from Georgia because he wanted to be around his family. So I, I think that's what's going to pull him to stay. Now, you would be concerned, though, obviously, because, I mean, he moved to Georgia. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. uh, you know, he didn't stay in Cedar Rapids the whole time, so... Uh, I think that's it's perfectly natural for fans to be concerned, and you got to run the race all the way to signing day. Heck, we we haven't even signed, we haven't even seen the twenty four class <laughs> signing. We got we got a year plus of drama with, with this, but, but you know. But let, let's be let's look at the positive. World we live in. It's good to have someone like Nick Brooks commit and get him early, and be able to have be able to have that as the focal mm -hmm. point of this class and build around him. Am I correct? You can build around him. Um, he, you know, maybe he can sway some other kids uh, to come join him because uh, maybe that he camps against or camps with, or uh, maybe it's attractive to a quarterback prospect in the 25 class that they, you know, Hey, I'm going to have my, my blind side guy, you know, he's going to be here and he's going to protect me. So, because uh, you know he's going to be there for three years. Because that's that's the rules. Got to be for at least three years. Uh, so we'll we'll see if they hold on to him. I think they will. But I, I'm by nature positive person. I thought for a long time they were going to hold on to Caden Proctor. I was shocked when uh, Ross Pierschbaker went to Bama. A kid who grew up uh, with a poster of Kinnick Stadium above his bed. I mean, it's just. You know, the draw of some of those, the the blue blood is, is strong sometimes. But sometimes kids just aren't built for that either. They don't want to be part of that. But who knows? Do you get the sense, Tom, that NIL was any part of Nick's decision? No, I don't, I don't even think he's had conversations with Iowa or anybody around Iowa about it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too concerned about it. Good pieces in 24 and 25. Don't forget Will Nolan, of course, Cody Fox, an interior guy, four-star kid from Iowa in 24 class. So George Barnett, uh, Brian, and Kirk continue to recruit well up front. They've had some misses of guys that have may not panned out due to injury or whatever circumstances. David but, yeah, David Koff, Ezra Miller, yeah, Jeff Ottenie, Just There are two examples of guys that just didn't pan out. And uh, for whatever reasons, um, just – just didn't and but you know we'll see if uh this one will be different i i tend to think it that they're going to get this one that's just my opinion tom kakert of hawkeye report.com uh you can find tom on twitter at hawkeye report and you can find him on iowa post game on saturday right here from yes. hawkeye the storm following iowa iowa state tom uh what pregame stuff if people are catching this late friday night what pregame uh, material can people still digest over at hawkeyereport.com got our game preview rocking and rolling we've got um uh then tomorrow i'll be there bright and early uh at uh, jack trice stadium and you know the one thing that i like to look at in the especially the first game of the year is what players they brought on the travel roster. So I always compile that right away and just kind of figure out which, especially the true freshmen. A lot of people like to know which true freshmen made the travel roster. That might be an indication they may be playing sooner rather than later. Um, yeah, we'll get an update on Cade McNamara and his, uh, his health. Um, I think he's doing pretty well from what we've gathered. So... Uh, I, I think he'll be fully ready to go on Saturday in um, in Ames. Well, Tom, appreciate you jumping on to talk Nick Brooks. Obviously a good day for sure. Iowa football recruiting. We'll look forward to future visits like this right here on the channel, and we'll talk to you after the Seahawks game. 
All right. Thanks, Corey.